it, first of all, just what they were able to do in the weight room this summer and off season and actually getting a chance to meet with these guys as opposed to this time last year, it was chaos. And so you see an understanding of the scheme. And so now we're able to kind of move into understanding what it takes to be a physical offensive line, just the mentality, the effort, all the things that go with it. So it's still an up and down process, but you're seeing flashes of it. So now it's about that consistency. They both have their strengths, right? And, and, and I don't want to say weaknesses, but things they're working on. <clears throat> Matt's a, more of a veteran. You know, he, he, Nick had a year under his belt. Nick played a little bit the year before, but Matt's been around for a long time. He's got brothers that played here. He's got a brother start the NFL. So, I mean, you know, most kids go home and they got nobody to talk to, and Matt can go home and call his brother who's playing for the Rams and really get extra work there. So it's a really good battle. I like where Matt's at right now mentally. He's doing some really good things, you know, and physically he's working on that. And, and you know, then going back to Nick, Nick's very athletic, you know, and so – Nick getting that confidence and understand what he's seeing, kind of like Matt is. That's where we're at. So, again, I expect that to be a really good competition. It may go through the year. That's not new, so they're used to it now, right? So um, they know that I'm a little different off the field than I am on the field, just like they have to be, right? You, you can only play this game one way up front, and, and, and there is no plays off up front, right? It's not like you're on the outside and they're going to run the ball the other way and you can kind of coast or something. Everybody's got a critical role in every play. And so it's really, I always talk about like mental warfare in the sense that you have to push yourself every snap and it starts in drill work. You know, if you take a play or rep off in drill work, you're going to do the same thing when you get tired out in the field. So, you know, that's, that's the job of an old line coach, right? We got to be great teachers, but then we have to push them, you know, at every snap and don't let, if you let it slide, then it'll become habit. So, you know, they, they respond and they understand when I'm getting on them, it's for a reason. You know, what we're trying to get to is we get some of the players doing it as well. You know, don't be just the coach-led group. Let's be a player-led group, and then we're going to really have something. You, first of all, you'd love to be able to play more than five guys if it's warranted. So you got a backup that's even. You want to be able to play with both those guys. they got to know that, you know, that's going to have guys practice harder also. And, you know, if there's a little bit of a drop-off, then maybe it's 60-40, 70-30. But if there's a major drop-off, you're going to play the starter. You're going to ride him until you have to. This is a unique situation with the COVID year. I mean, we have nine guys in our room, if you count horse, that have started games. So in one hand, everybody's like, well, that's great, you know? Yes, it's great that you have that experience and we have great competition, but how do they handle that mentally? Because at the end of the day, there's only gonna be five that are gonna walk out there for the first snap against Northwestern. So there's gonna be four guys that pride's gonna be hurt. So they have to understand that they're competing against the defense every day. They're not competing against each other. And at the end of the day, who moves in the best and who stops in the best is going to get on the field. And if they keep that mindset, then I think we're going to be in good shape. Big part of what Jason, Coach Novak, and that crew does, you know, it's more than just the power aspect of it. You know, Coach Berghart and the science part of it. It's, you know, the kids, you know, sometimes you have a great lift, you, you're tired and sore, right? And that's fine sometimes. But ideally, they want to feel better when they leave the weight room or at the end of a phase and you feel that way and they're saying those things. So I think that's going to pay off. That's going to be big because last year you didn't have that, right? So that's going to be a huge force. Last year we, we were watching guys lifting water jugs and, and cinder blocks at home, you know, so it's a, but we're not the only ones. So everybody's going to be better. So we got to understand that as well. Oh, Ethan, you know, he's a freshman. So, you know, man, he'll show a flash or two. We are like, boy, you know, he's going to help us some days and be really good. And there's other, other times that, you know, he looks like a freshman. And so, you know, I think getting used to even how big he is, you know, and understanding, I think in his mind, he's got to understand that he can be more dominant than he even is right now. And I think once that clicks and he has that confidence, he's going to be in good shape. You know, he, he's done a really good job. He, he's got an intensity to him. Uh, he, he's got this will to finish that not a lot of people have. You've seen it on tape. And, and you know, it, it's hard because you don't want to take that away from him, but you, you got to practice a certain way, right? And so you got to take care of your teammates. I mean, we got to be physical, go hard, but we don't need to be on the ground. We don't need to fight every other rep, you know? So he, he's, he's done a good job of, of, you know, controlling that, but you still see that will to want to finish and go through the whistle. So there's some minor things we're still working on, like every old lineman, but, but he brings something to the table that we were really counting on. He's definitely shown improvement. You know, I'd say with Spencer, it still comes down to that consistency. You know, when he gets tired, are you a liability or can you push through it? Right. So that's the, that's the biggest part. It's trust. 
like as a coaching staff and myself, I got to know when we get out there and we're on a, a eight play drive and it's third and five and he's gassed, right? Is he going to lock it down and have great technique or is he going to spit the bit and flail and then we're going to give up a sack and, and, you know, and then bad things happen. So that's what it comes to, right? He understands the scheme much better. He, he, he plays physical. He's got good feet, right? We're working on him playing lower, more flexibility, but then just that consistency when you're tired. Luke, Luke has really worked hard to try to get in a situation to get a chance to play this year. And, you know, every day he, he's improving physically. You know, he's been in our meetings, so he understands what we're doing. He brings really good leadership to our room. You know, he, he's a guy that he calls it how he sees it, and there's not many people that will do that. He'll call out his peers, and they respect him because they know what he, he's done. They know what he's been through. And so I love having him in the group, and, he, and he's shown some improvement this fall camp. we got to see, you know, how far can he go, how will he hold up, and, but he's going to be a positive addition to our room no matter what. But you've seen him play tackle. You know, he, he's long enough to play on the edge. He does have good feet. You know, he, he's, he's um, it's, it's strange to explain this. He's not a real long athletic guy, but he's long enough. But he's, he's a powerful person that on the inside, what he brings to the table is, is he's stout enough to move D tackles, but then he brings that pass pro ability that some guards don't have because he has played on the edge and he does have length. So that's where, you know, that's the plus, right? Is he's big enough to be in there moving people, but he also is a good pass blocker to be able to handle guys in the inside. So that that's that would be my answer as far as his strengths. N not dramatically, you know, it's 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 do what I do. I think the biggest thing is um, I'm involved with, you know, some meetings that maybe I wouldn't have been involved with, with Coach Tuck, and, and I really appreciate his trust in me. And so I may be a sounding board for him on some things. You know, and I feel comfortable I can go to him if there's some things I see. But for the most part, my day-to-day -day job is about trying to coach this old line to be the best old line that they can be. So, you know, there's little things here and there. Probably more in the off-season affects me more than in-season. All right. Thanks, Coach Cap. All right. Appreciate it. Now, that's, that's going into camp as a starting point. And, and both those guys can play on both sides. And Jarvis can play inside and outside. And so, at the end of the day, you're really looking for that combination of the best five. So Jarvis gives us some flexibility with that. And with those tackles being able to play both sides, it also adds flexibility.